you might not feel this way, and certainly Mr. Hanty does not, but I, I thought I was doing Mr. Hanty a solid here. Okay. Um, why are we having this hearing? Well, I said a status hearing. Uh, I said it, you know, before uh, passed in the night, um, the motion by the defense to reconsider the court's prior decision on bail, but we'll get to that in a minute. But let's let's talk about the lay of the land. First, uh, we are currently set for next Thursday, April 7, starting at nine o'clock in the morning, a final pre-trial conference and motion hearing on any pending but not yet decided motions. Um, so we'll talk about whether that's still go going to happen and if so, in person or remotely. Number one. Number two, <coughs> this trial is set on the stack that begins May 2nd. Uh, you're currently set for 10-day trial, Monday, May 2nd. Uh, I want to talk about the viability of that date uh, for a couple different reasons preview of that issue is, number one, I have a sexual assault trial set at the same time, also with somebody in custody. Number two, neither trial is going to happen then because that week, uh, May 2nd through 6th, is the every four-year statewide judicial summit to borrow a phrase from Hunger Games, it's the quarter quell. This is a big deal. Uh, all the judges, limited jurisdiction, general jurisdiction um, throughout the state meet for education, training. Keynote speaker, Anthony Kennedy. And <clears throat> my attendance at that, if although not formally required, has been strongly encouraged. Next, um, we still have Mr. Hillegas on pending warrant status. I haven't received any word that the warrant has been served. So I assume it is not. Then we also have a recently filed motion to reconsider the bail, as I mentioned, and other logistics issues. So those that's why I set this hearing, right? That's why I set this hearing. I want to know if the state and still still intends to go. Uh, does it intend to go as against Mr. Hanty only? Uh, does it does the state understand that there's virtually no chance of going uh, May second because of the judicial summit or the following week because of the uh, other matter that is taking priority? The state of Nevada versus Manuel Perez Sanchez. Uh, just so you've heard the case number, if anyone wants to look it up. CR 20-3521. And then the court does have uh, the two weeks after that available as well. Okay. Um, let me start with Mr. Stegi, then Mr. Pataro. I'll ask you some questions and to weigh in. Um, what, what do you think about the status of the trial in light of Mr. Hillegas pending warrant status, Mr. Stegi? Uh, I think it is not viable uh, given the, the current uh, lay of the land. Uh, I am, I will say, familiar with the status of the, of the uh, warrant and uh, at least some of the efforts to uh, secure Mr. Uh, Hillegas. Uh, I think even assuming he were to come into custody in short order, uh, it might be difficult to go to trial on uh, this next uh, stack, although I think it could be done. Well, so, he, he still has to uh, submit to... Uh, competency evaluations, and then a hearing, and then depending on the evaluator's position, everyone gets to be heard, maybe an evidentiary hearing. I mean, it's near impossible, um, even, if they weren't, even if the warrant were served as we speak. A, a big lift to sort of borrow a, a current phrase for that to happen. Um, flowing from there, I think, are a few um, sort of issues, if the court wants me to address those, or I'm happy to continue in the question. Well, and can, 
go yeah go ahead and then uh, you know with respect to whether the state would uh, be inclined to seek to sever or not oppose a request to sever by Mr. Pataro if he decided uh, he and Mr. Hanty decided strategically it was in their best interest to move forward uh, by themselves and then I'm not sure what the state's position would be but um, and, and then and then the, the fact is that we we really can't go until the 16th at the earliest in this case. So with all that, Mr. Stegi, what else would you like to say? Hold on, Mr. Bataro. Uh, and I, I think what Mr. Bataro is going to say um, is that we, he and I have discussed this eventuality, this question of whether uh, Mr. Hanty ought to go to trial um, on his own. Now, putting aside the issue of whether I would agree to, to uh, severance, um, I, I will say, <laughs> and I will say, I am against uh, severance, but um, my understanding is the defense's position is that they ought not to be severed, that Mr. Hanty is desirous of going to trial at the same time uh, as Mr. Hillegas. Um, so I think that should be the proper outcome. However, if, if um, I do not want that uh, agreement or if that is the result, I don't want that to influence the court's decision on the bail issue. Um, the idea being Mr. Hillegas' uh, wrongdoing, I will, sort of willful wrongdoing against the court and against this process ought not to benefit uh, his co-defendant. And if necessary, I can provide additional information on that. Well, and, and I think I did. I'll reference my bail motion where you have Mr. Henty encouraging or that uh, Mr. Henty be unavailable for the competence, competency proceedings. So sort of Henty's own um, actions uh, not to contribute to severance and more appropriately to the court's decision on bail, the reconsideration issue. Mr. Bataro. Uh, yes, Your Honor. The reason I was trying to interrupt was exactly for what Mr. Stegi said at the last court hearing, I had told the court that I would be prepared to go to trial with or without Mr. Hillegas. Um, I then had a conversation uh, with Mr. Hanty uh, after that, and he told me that he wanted to go to trial. He did not want to go to trial alone. He wanted to go to trial with Mr. Hillegas. And so what I did is I called Mr. Stegi and informed him that uh, Mr. Hanty's position, my position had changed and that uh, we did not seek a, a severance. And so that's, a, that's a, what happened. I told the court I was, would want to go to trial. And then Mr. Handy told me he did not want to under those circumstances. And I informed uh, Mr. Stegi uh, of, of that fact. So given that, um, I, I, I assume, and given what the court says, uh, we're not going to uh, be going to trial on those times. Now, believe it or not, I've, I've just had a complication as far as May. Um, and, and that is that there was a trial that was set, it got continued. I told the state judge down here that I was having a conference call in an hour, which is now, I just got off the, the Zoom meeting on that one and told the judge under no, uh, that I would anticipate if the, the court was gonna continue this matter based upon the severance issue, but we would be done by the 15th. And therefore, if that judge wanted to set the trial after the 15th, uh, then I would definitely, uh, as I told the court, give my promise that they had to wheel me in in a wheelchair, I would be there. Um, but that was after the, the 15th. And of course, so now the second, and the next week down uh, up here is gone. So I'm sort of in a pickle uh, based upon my misinterpretation or malinterpretation of what I thought was gonna happen. So if the matter does get continued, uh, then I'm going to unfortunately need it sometime in maybe into June. Uh, so that's the, the, the problem I have there. Uh, I don't know if you want me to address the, 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 issue, the issue of bail was not one of a significant change in terms of a bail status of what the court uh, had set as bail. It's the hold, 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 hold on. 
Um, let me let me just let me we'll we'll talk bail in a minute, or or we'll agree to talk it next week when we were supposed to have our final pretrial conference. I know Mr. Hanty and the defense would like to talk about it right now, so it, you know I, I get that. But just let me process this for a minute. <clears throat> The week of May 2nd is out, even if the matters were severed. The week of the, set, the 9th is out uh, because you're trumped uh, by a Cat A case. Um, the week of the 16th, you've give, given, it sounds like a soft promise to the judge in Las Vegas about your availability. Um, and then we have Mr. Hilligus on pending warrant status, of which, by the way, I know nothing. I mean, I know less than nothing about efforts to serve, uh, success or failure to serve, avoidance or not. By Mr. I, I know nothing about Mr. Hilligus' actions other than I have not learned he's in custody. All right. But we all understand that uh, if and when he's apprehended and he's um, uh, in custody at the Washington County Jail, he's subject to evaluation of two professionals. And although you know I can pull strings, uh, not on their professional work, evaluation techniques or conclusions, but on making, uh, trying to get them in to see him as quickly as their schedule allows, that's, we're, we're several, several weeks away from having a hearing on what the results of those are. Uh, so it seems to me that we should, by the time we're done with this hearing, vacate the current trial date, vacate the motion to confirm, have the court direct you to counsel to reset it with uh, Kylie Lane, the jury commissioner, as your schedules allow, taking into account the realities that we're facing, not to set it in a year, not to set it in nine months, not to set it in six months, but we get it set in the in the reasonably near future. Um, let's be optimistic that we can have Mr. Illigus evaluated sooner rather than later. And once we have our new trial stack and motion to confirm date, we can set a closer in time, more realistic pretrial final pretrial conference. Um, that would be my thinking on that. Regardless, frankly, Mr. Pataro, if uh, Mr. Uh, Hanty remains in custody or not. But before I order that, uh, what, what do you think about, Mr. Pataro, what I just said, please? Uh, I have no problem, problem with that. I had my calendar pulled for through September, and then um, I can get with Mr. Stagey. Uh, I only have one potential uh, problem in July. Um, I will be out of the uh, state the uh, latter part of August on vacation with my family from the 18th, I think, to the close to the end of the month outside of the. So I would rather if we're going to have a trial set, I would rather have it sooner versus later, um, either sometime in uh, late June or uh, uh, early July and that time, depending upon what the court's calendar is and how that works out. So I have no problem setting it sooner versus later. Okay, Mr. Stegi, your thoughts? Uh, the court's uh, inclinations are wise. I think that's the way to go. All right, before I, before I order that, let's do this. Let's, I'm gonna go uh, uh, into recess mode here for about 10 minutes. Mr. Pataro, uh, would you uh, take this opportunity to call up to the jail? I wanna make sure you explain this to Mr. Hanty and you have an opportunity to hear his thoughts uh, before you uh, come back on. And then if, he, uh, if you have a different thought or expression uh, from him that you'd like to court to hear, I'll certainly give you an opportunity to do that. Um, so Mr. Uh, Hanty, uh, your attorney is going to call you and then I'll come back on at approximately 2.20, okay? All right, thank you. Courts of recess. All right, we're ready to go back on the record, Judge, when you're ready. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy. All right, Ms. Bataro, did you have enough time to uh, speak to uh, Mr. Hanty? Uh, yes, I did. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Anything else to add or comment upon uh, based on the discussion you, Mr. Stegi, and I had with respect to vacating the trial and resetting it, you know, promptly uh, along with the associated uh, pre-trial deadline so we can move this matter along? Uh, uh, Your Honor, I spoke with Mr. Handy about it. Uh, we're going to get with Mr. Stegi. We'll see what we can do uh, 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 early July, see if we can uh, work that out with uh, him and the court. Um, the other thing is, and, and stay, I, and I don't think we need that hearing uh, the next week. Uh, 
uh, I think that can be rescheduled also, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Mr. Stegge, your thoughts? Uh, no additional thoughts, thank you. All right, it's the order, and, and we're not done. We're gonna talk about bail here in a minute, um, whether a decision will be made or whether um, I'll let the state take a position in writing, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But first things first, trial is vacated, motion to confirm hearing is vacated. Pre-trial hearing next week is vacated. Parties are directed to promptly contact court's jury commissioner, reset the case for trial on an upcoming stack. Let's do our level best to have the trial set within three months and the associated pre-trial deadlines. The week after the July 4th holiday week, I already have a trial starting, a category A. I know that because we had a pre-trial hearing on it this morning. Um, that's one, Mr. Stegge, that, as I recall, um, the Mr. public Hoppe defender, was, pardon me? Mr. Hoppy was there this morning. Your Honor. Yeah, Mr. That's right. You were, you were there also with Mr. Hoppy and Mr. Arascata, right? That, so, you know, it's, you know what that case is about. Category A um, murder charge. But I've, I am of a like mind. Uh, summer trials don't scare me uh, like they seem to scare other, other people. And uh, I'm ready, willing, and able to uh, preside over this matter as soon as we can get it scheduled. All right. Now, as to the bail, right? As to bail. So we have a motion for reasonable bail. Uh, really, it's a motion asking the court to reconsider. So the question is, do we take the opportunity right now to for the court to hear from both sides? Um, or does the state um, you know, insist on their right to respond in writing and then have the court either decide it or set another hearing? Um, let me tell you what I'd rather do. I'd rather decide it right now. I know Mr. Hanty and Mr. Batar would like it decided now, but um, I didn't want to confuse people by the fact that I had set a status hearing today. Uh, I, that was just a coincidence that it, it got filed at the same time, roughly, that the request to reconsider the bail order was. So with that being said, Mr. Stegge, are, are, are you prepared to argue it now or would you like me to set a hearing on it uh, promptly? Judge, I have a draft of my um, bail, uh, my opposition. Um, if I can locate that, <laughs> that would and be make, helpful. And make argument from it? And make argument from it. Um, you know, I, I have a strong position against that. I, I think the court will probably. Well, let's, let's, so let's, so procedurally though, if assuming you can put your fingers on that and you recall your thoughts that you were going to express in writing, do you have any objection for me entertaining that uh, motion right now? In this instance only, I don't oppose it. I, um, uh, so if procedurally, I, I'm okay going forward today, but I, I want it to be quickly forgotten by the court should I argue a different position in another case. Okay, fair enough. Mr. Bataro, we'll start with you. It's, uh, the court will entertain it now. So I've got the motion and go ahead, Mr. Bataro, when you're ready, turn your microphone back on, please. Um, Mr. Bataro, I, I have a motion which essentially says, Judge, please walk back your prior order a little bit um, because the amounts that you indicated for the bond are beyond my client's reach. And so he's, he's been able to, I, as I understand it, save up or have access to the $7,500, but not the uh, security. And uh, the defense argues that um, that you know justice will not be disserved if the court were to modify its prior order. Um, the court has Mr. Hanty's attention. Uh, he would uh, be placed with a electronic monitoring device location only uh, before he leaves the jail. He's certified already. He has no firearms under oath. Uh, he'll abide the court's order on staying away from people he has no business associating with. He, he won't associate with Mr. Hillegas while he's on pending warrant status. And so the defense says, Judge, uh, please, um, please uh, review and edit downward your prior order to be 7,500 uh, cash only and dispense with the security position. Is that right, Mr. Bataro? That's a very good argument, Your Honor. You should be a defense attorney. Well, here, here's, but here, here's the problem I have. And I know, 
I, let me uh, let me let me tell you that some of the, the the concern. Number one, remember how we got here, right? He was Mr. Hanty was out um, of custody, and it was the state of Nevada that asked me, among other things, to completely revoke his bail. The court declined to do that. The court said, "No, I do not find good cause." And all the court did was order recertify no firearms, stay away from people that you do not have any business being around, that's in the vernacular, and uh, put on the GPS tracking. Your client, as we all know, uh, uh, disregarded that piece of the order. I understand you've, you and he expressed the reasons why the GPS was of concern, but then as the state pointed out at the last hearing, uh, he went to Elko with Mr. Hillegas, or it was at least uh, pulled over in that county, uh, they had thoughts of going to Eureka. They had already gone to California. And um, so the concern was that, um, and, I, and I expressed concern that Mr. Hanty might be headed toward the East Coast where, where his estranged wife and her family were, but he, he, he disavowed any intention to do that, which I accepted. All right. Uh, so then over the state's objection, I did revise the bail order, the 100,000 uh, lower. Indeed, you might not feel this way, and certainly Mr. Hanty does not, but I, I thought I was doing Mr. Hanty a solid here. Uh, I cut the amount in half, and I made it bondable. Um, in, in, in the world of, of fair and just bail decisions by the court, uh, I thought that was giving Mr. Hanty um, the benefit of the doubt on many of the issues that the state has asked the court very strongly not to give him the benefit of. Now, when, when counsel says, but judge, this, th that's beyond him, right? The, the financial status of somebody for whom bail is being sought is a factor. We all know that under the U.S. Constitution, you have a right to reasonable bail, but not necessarily right to bail that you can make. That's number one. Number two, we have a 30-year uh, veteran, of a uh, peace officer veteran, who proudly served in many capacities in many locations. That's not lost on the court. But what, what's also not lost on the court, Mr. Pataro, is that of all the people that he's interacted with personally or professionally, it, it's a little bit telling that there's not a single person willing to post something of value of $50,000. In other words, are they worried as well that he might not appear for court and they would lose their collateral? Uh, do they know him better? Uh, than, than, you know, than the rest of us? Um, uh, does he not have uh, family or friend support uh, to that level? I mean, 50,000 is a lot of money. $50,000 in property itself is a lot. But after a 30-year career with the roots he has, it's informative to the court that there's not a single person out there that's willing, apparently, or able to stand that up. And that's a little bit eye-opening to the court. We're not talking about a 22-year-old kid who doesn't know people of substance or wealth um, or haven't had time to accumulate some something of value over the years. We're talking about a man uh, in his 50s that, uh, you know, giving him the benefit of his service to the community and law enforcement, it's surprising. I really thought 50,000 uh, bondable uh, and uh, $7,500 um, uh, would I suspect um, the cash component would be would be imminently doable. Um, uh, apparently, though, Mr. Bataro, uh, you take a different approach. And then finally, usually if I'm going to reconsider an order, I, I want there to have been a material change. The law changed. The facts changed. The court um, uh, misapprehended or miscomprehended. And you saw the amount of time it took my staff and I to write that order. I mean, we didn't shoot from the hip on this. We took our time, looked at the factors. As I mentioned, I try to give the benefit of the doubt to Mr. Hanty. I know that jail's not doing him any good up there. I realize he's uh, it, it, it's it's not a great situation. I get that. Um, on the other hand, I'm going to have Mr. Uh, Stagey remind the court how we got to this point. The bail has already been considered um, twice, and so I, give me something from which you would uh, ask the court to change its view, Mr. Bataro. <laughs> Yes, Your Honor, and, and look, I, I, I'm 
I've done this probably longer than you've been alive, um, unfortunately for one of us. Um, I mean, I've done this for a, a long, long time. And far be it for me to stand up here and suggest that the, the manner in which the court dealt with the bail was somehow inappropriate and therefore you should change your mind. That, 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 that's not my argument, Judge. And, and, and it has never been my argument to, to, the, to this court. But, but this is this is the argument. The, this this case is unique in terms that it is less a or it is less a criminal matter than it became through and quite truthfully, I think through the actions of Mr. Hillegas and Mr. Hanty buying into some some of those annex some sort of. Uh, a political issue of, of, of fundamental rights, et cetera, et cetera. I, I, I've been an attorney too long to, to uh, uh, buy into those sort of arguments. And, and b believe me, I have, I, have, I have represented people on the far left and, and the far, far right. Um, and so I, I, I dealt with those issues. But here's, here's where we're at. If we want to go back in, in dealing with the first thing, it was the issue of, of, of him transfer, having a weapon transferred legally into the state. You have to go through uh, the appropriate uh, licensee, licensee to do it. And someone wrongly felt that because there was a criminal case pending, that that somehow prohibited him from possessing a firearm. And that, that's where the argument uh, uh, came. Um, I pointed out finally, to, I pointed out to the, the justice of the peace that, that no, that is not the, the, the statute, the federal statute only kicks into when there is an information or an indictment, indictment of the federal system, generally an information of the state system. Therefore, there has to be the, the, uh, the establishment of probable cause. Uh, and the judge took into account, but said, "You know, fine. I'm going to take away uh, uh, his his weapon." And and he, in fact, uh, I believe, clearly has uh, done that. He he didn't have another weapon. This idea of that the wife found hidden uh, uh, behind a bedstead sometime during the eight year term of the marriage, a a, a weapon without a, a clip in it. Well, it is what it is. That's what was said. He swore under oath that, that he, he, he didn't do it. The idea of going out and, 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 and saying some of the things he said, yes, he did have, have the right to say them. It probably may not have been the brightest thing in the world uh, when you're facing a, a, a charge, but nevertheless. But we, we dealt with the, the issue of bail. So what am I seeking? I am seeking the following. I am seeking that he does not have the collateral to do there. And, it, and, it, and it's a heck of a thing to ask someone or, or try to get someone to put up $50,000 of their property uh, uh, as a collateral in this sense. Remember what's happened now. Remember, he's, he's in a divorce situation. His wife left and took all, all their property. I mean, that's what's the issue in the divorce. Outside of this, uh, there, there's now a pending suit, I believe, by the, uh, by the uh, uh, rest home uh, uh, against Mr. Handy. So that's out there. Well, that, I, that, that I'm aware of because it came to me civilly. Oh, okay, okay. But I, I recused. I recused okay. as soon as it was assigned to me or as soon as I realized who the third party defendants were. And it went to a different civil judge. Okay. I, I, I wasn't aware you were. But nevertheless, uh, that's out there. So the idea of... Of the inability to come up with fifty thousand dollar collateral in Mr. Hanty's situation is, in fact, I I, I think unfortunately uh, understandable. Um, uh, in that, it, it, so everything he's had is gone. His divorce is is, is uh, uh, marriages in shambles. He's had all these problems arising out of out of something that probably never should have uh, had these these consequences. Is he at fault for not going down and, and, and getting that bracelet? Ab absolutely. 
Uh, uh, absolutely. I, 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 I can't disagree with that, no, nor would I. But it wasn't that he was somehow fleeing in the sense of relocating uh, at all. He wasn't. His trip to California was he gave an interview um, to uh, a blog. Um, his trip to alcohol had to deal with what you could or couldn't do with with um, with ankle bracelets, whether you could listen into uh, someone on an ankle bracelet. Now, the court is aware and the state is aware and I'm aware of, depending upon the ankle bracelet, yes, you can. Some you can, some you can't. Uh, some have that audio thing. So his concern, if you will, maybe paranoia on that issue uh, was was there. So what what I've what I've asked is not so much is, is the collateral aspect of it is the cash aspect of it. I mean, this basically will take up every everything that he has. He makes a couple thousand dollars a month based upon his service to the state. His pension is not a great pension. Uh, I think it's twenty one hundred a month is is what he uh, he gets. I, I believe that's the amount he can answer that. Uh, maybe a little more clearly, but that was the amount of it. So, so he's putting up all his cash. He doesn't have any place to go. Um, and the idea of, of fleeing the jurisdiction is not one that is, uh, that is uh, a reasonable belief that he would in fact flee over, over this. He reminds me more of the person who doesn't show up, who's still living in the same area, uh, but doesn't make the court appearance, doesn't do what he's supposed to do, and then wakes up and finds out why everyone's mad at him. And I think that's uh, the situation with Stewart. Now, Stewart does have a, a situation that I think, unfortunately, based on his age, based on the situation, is with his back. Um, he still has not had uh, treatment, he feels, in, in there concerning his back. He's still in pain. He's now using a walker. He's not doing this because he, he wants to. He's doing this because, unfortunately, uh, he has to. And so what we're asking is, is not some change in, in, in the structure of the law, but, but to go back to where it is. Is he going to flee uh, if the court uh, grants the motion and put changes to the bill to the the uh, cash bail of 7,500. Is that going to allow him to flee? No, Your Honor. I don't believe it's reasonable to believe that he, he will flee. Uh, does he understand that? Yes. And does he agree, as he stated? Yes. He understands that, that, that he has to get that monitor. And, and, I, and I think the court is, is right. I mean, having a monitor that you don't really monitor is a, it, it, it's more of a, a safeguard if things go wrong is, is quite true the way I saw uh, the, that, that monitor. It wasn't tracking where you're going. It's more tracking of where you've been if the issue ever comes up. I think he understands the difference in, in that now. And that, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he is. Him and I have spoken about this. The fact of the matter is that people who don't make bail are three times more likely to get a harsher sentence for the same offense than someone who is out of jail. Mr. Handy has a divorce action he has to contend with. He has a civil action he has to contend with. He, he has the fact of, of conferring and, and preparing his case. But we do know the reality of, of, of bail. Um, and, and that reality that bail is just by the nature of it, if one is incarcerated or not incarcerated, the difference between the manner in which cases are held and the manner in which they, they, they are resolved and the manner in which they get tried, if you will, um, is significantly different. We can't put our head in the sand as attorneys or judges and say, oh no, that, that isn't true. We know it is statistically and all the studies uh, have, have shown that uh, uh, all the way through. I mean, I, I, I think of probably the the biggest areas that dealt with this was down in the uh, uh, the Houston area. I forget what the name of the county is down there, but there was uh, massive litigation, federal litigation, dealing with 
uh, the effects of bail, uh, monetary bail versus non-monetary uh, bail. Um, the monetary bail is uh, an amount that he can make, but the, the court raises the thing, and yes, and there is that old case law, quite truthfully, um, uh, it's still part of the statute. I, I, I understand that. I was involved down here with my partner who was an assemblyman as we were attempting to uh, revise some of the bail uh, statutes that Judge Hardesty finally uh, dealt with in, in the case. Uh, but the idea is the, of, of the monetary uh, aspect of it uh, with whether it's 50,000 or 100,000 or, or 15 million, uh, he's, he doesn't have the collateral. And I think that is something that, although the court doesn't have to consider as dispositive, it does. I think it's something the court uh, should uh, look at and say, is that the deal breaker? Is that the thing that I think that he will not show up unless I put that in? And I and I don't think it. I don't think it is here. And yes, the court did, and, and I I recognize it, Your Honor. Maybe not the client, but I recognize the difference between a hundred thousand. Uh, a bail with with a cash and a a fifty thousand bondable bail. Uh, I understand those those things. Mr. Stegi understands those. But where we're at now is he doesn't have the collateral, and and so he doesn't have it. He's not going to get it. Um, the divorce, all the situation, everything that has happened to him. You know, he's he's uh, been dealt the last two years either a bad hand or he's drawn to a bad hand. But nevertheless, he, he has a bad hand. Seventy five hundred dollars of his money is he's not leaving. He has the ankle bracelet uh, that shows where he has been. I I understand the monitoring is still the situation up in, in Washoe that you, you can't do the other type of monitoring. Uh, but nevertheless, I think the way you're in is is the the thumb on your head if you if you speak. Uh, the idea of he doesn't have a weapon, uh, if the court wants him to be checking in on a periodic basis to the uh, uh, jail, um, then you can, you know, once a week or a few times a week on the, the check-in. So we don't have a situation of, of worrying about uh, him taking off. I, if that gives the court additional uh, uh, feelings that he, he will be here at the uh, court appearances, then I think that's reasonable. I don't think what I'm asking is unreasonable. I don't think from a constitutional thing that it is unreasonable. I think it does fit within the, the structure of bail, which is fundamental to make sure that he shows up when he's supposed to show up to court. Um, hey, let, me, let me ask you one question before I hear from Mr. Stegi. If I were to ask him right now, where will you live, Mr. Hanty, when you make bail? What, what, what's he gonna tell me, Mr. Pitaro? Because you know, on pretrial supervision, um, they want they want to make sure they know where he's living and it's an improved location, right? So, where's he going to go the day he walks out on bail? I, or we, well, I don't think he's going to walk out until he has that. Uh, quite truthfully, I, I, it's not that he walks out and then picks it. I think it has to be there first, and I I, I believe he can tell you the uh, uh, the the address. Well, do you mind? So, do you mind if I address your client directly? Absolutely not. It, it, I encourage it, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Hanty. So, where, if you make bail, where will you go uh, live, and with who, and do they know you're coming? Well, uh, Your Honor, uh, I have family here that uh, predates me before I arrived in Reno, Nevada, in 1974. Uh, they've offered to allow me to basically crash on the couch until I'm able to put some money together to get an apartment. I, Judge, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I've been in the state for 47 years, 45 plus of that in Reno. I've got family and friends. I got a friend that said I could stay at his place for a uh, period of time until I'm able to get on my feet. If you're going to ask me when I walk out the door of this uh, Washington County Jail facility, do I have a place to go? I do. Uh, I don't have a place of my own. I have to rely on friends and family and not necessarily in that order. But uh, the bottom line is, uh, the, and you alluded to this earlier, I want to address it real quickly. Uh, the people that could provide the collateral because of the negative image portrayed against me in the media, local media, they're hesitant. 
And that's been stepped forth against me. And if you want to look at all the, the news articles against me, it paints me in a very bad light. And uh, that's why they're hesitant with the collateral. I know people would do it if I was given the opportunity to tell my side of the story. So, and Mr. Stagy's sitting there not understand that, but Mr. Stagy, you're the one to put the moniker on me of a danger and help the, the community. Okay, so hold on, Mr. Santi, just, just make your oh, comments sorry. to me. Um, so, because you heard, you, let me just say this, Ms. Shanty. You heard my comments to Mr. Bataro along the lines of, you've been here a long time. You served many the community in many different ways, proudly, um, and you have a, a strong resume in law enforcement. So in my world, usually that would mean there would be people out there that would want to bail you out. But the fact that they're reluctant, to me, suggests they're worried that you would not show up for court and they would lose their their bail. Is that not your view? No, it's not, Your Honor. Uh, they're worried because of the persona perceived against me by the local media. They're, they're scared. And I, uh, Judge, I was not trying to flee. Uh, I was going merely to Elko to talk to an electronics expert who was friends with Mr. Hill. I guess obviously he's not around to discuss that matter specific. But I wasn't fleeing. There's no luggage in the car. We were heading back to Reno. And quite frankly, Judge, if I was going to flee, that would have been the day before on Tuesday when the warrant came out. I did not flee that. I wasn't, I didn't have an airline ticket, a bus ticket, or anything. I was coming back to Reno once we discussed the situation. Yes, I was going to visit uh, the sheriff in Eureka County if he was going to be able to uh, accommodate us. But that was just a merely a personal part of the trip. The main focus was to get the, the parameters on the GPS. So to get back to your question, Your Honor, uh, they're, they're hesitant because of what is portrayed against me. In the new, and I've tried to explain it to them, and they're scared. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, where do well, we but Mr. Hanty, that, I mean, I, that might make sense to you, but in my world, that's hard for me to understand because the only reason somebody who posts bail should be scared is that they're worried the person they're posting it for won't show up to court and they'll lose their bail. It doesn't, the, the results of the trial, pretrial motions, that the, their bail is going to come back to them. Their security is going to come back to them as long as you make all your court appearances. So I don't know what they're scared of. Um, right, uh, I, I think what Mr. Handy is saying is the opposite of what I, I think what he is saying is, is they're worried that they'll be tainted by putting his bail up. Not that he's going to play, but, but th that they'll somehow be tainted by, by being associated with it by putting the bail up. I mean, all right, I got I, that, that, I, that. All right, that makes that makes more sense. All right, so Mr. Hanty, hold your thought for a minute. Okay. I want to hear from Mr. Stagey. Um, is there anything that the court overlooked? Have you heard anything today that gives you um, uh, another uh, uh, you know, fresh set of eyes on this that would suggest to you the court should consider making a change? And if not, why not? I will say emphatically, Your Honor, no way. Uh, we have heard nothing but Pataro, Mr. Pataro, uh, rehashing all the old arguments and Mr. Hanty himself rehashing the old arguments that he lost, that the court found not to be credible. I will go farther. I'm going to use strong language here, but I think it would be a grave mistake for the court to say when, when we, Mr. Pataro, uh, Mr. Hanty is among the worst offenders before this court in terms of behavior on bail. He has been on notice for a very long time of that his behavior is inappropriate and he keeps engaging in it. And I don't want the court to think, I don't want any defenders or similarly situated defense people to see this and say, you know what you do when you, you have your bail hearing, you lose, you put on all your evidence, which law compels you to, and you lose, and the, the court makes a reasonable determination that well, they you didn't got lose. It. They, they didn't lose. They didn't. They got it cut in half and made it bondable. Yeah. So, they, they didn't get everything they wanted. But I, I want to make it clear. I thought that that the court was doing Mr. Hanty a bit of a favor here. Now right. that, that that's probably not the right word. I thought I was being uh, fair to both sides and giving yeah. Mr. Hanty the benefit of the doubt on a lot of close calls. So go ahead, please yes. continue. Yes. No. And I'm using sort of the vernacular as the court did. Um, in terms of the arguments that were made, were not so convincing as to release uh, Mr. Hanty without some without enhanced uh, conditions. And I wouldn't want it to be the case that you know what you do then you just say pretty please, and that's really sort of a um, 
you know, supplication. Well, come on, please, pretty please, Judge. I know you didn't believe these arguments before. Believe them now. The motion filed by Mr. Pataro has nothing new except he really wants it, Judge. That is a that I will say for myself as a litigator in this case, cold comfort. When Mr. Hanty, from the beginning of this case, has my name, has uh, Chief Soto's name on his lips in a gun store. Cold comfort GPS, Mr. Pataro says. Um, it's, not action, it's not accurate that um, the GPS is tracking you. It's more about like after the fact stuff. Yeah, cold comfort. This court, I challenge you, Your Honor, uh, humbly to point to another case where a defendant has shown himself both to be a risk to the public, public safety, and a flight risk in the same case. I do not care, right, and, and added to what I said before. Every time uh, Mr. Hanty, this, an issue of bail comes up, Mr. Hanty testifies. Every time he addresses me, right? Not the court, he is taking this personally. Cold comfort that he only has $7,500. Doesn't matter. Does not matter that the court wants to do him a solid. I submit humbly, Your Honor, it's not your job to do him a solid. Under the law, we risk, we balance bail factors. Mr. Hanty has testified at every hearing, and I submit that part of the reason that the court didn't OR him in the first instance is because he is lacking in credibility. He is lacking in credibility when he says he was not fleeing. If I was going to flee, I would have fled the day before. I think that's baloney when he when the evidence is that he told the trooper he was headed to the East Coast. And his backup position is the uh, a sheriff in a rural county of Nevada when he was, I mean, pulled over and he says, I'm going to the East Coast. I mean, he wants to relitigate. Like, I, I think fairly that every time he's testified, his, his testimony has been shown to be not credible. And so should the courts, why, what change in circumstances has there been that the court ought to say, well, I didn't really mean it. It's, you know, I, I feel bad for you. Cold comfort, judge, cold comfort, a guy who is a risk to public safety. Not to say an incredible, adding to lack of credibility, an incredible lack of self-reflection. Man who does not understand that showing up at the FBI office had the uh, threatening uh, overtones to it uh, that it did, similar to the uh, Mr. League's office, a man with who does not understand that that is threatening. That when this court says, go put on a GPS, a man of who celebrates, we've heard in every hearing probably all about his law enforcement career, who knows you do not disobey a judge. A judge's order is what law enforcement officials swear to uphold. They believe in the system. They are supposed to believe in the system and Mr. Mr. Hanty did the opposite. He, he fled. So yeah, Mr. Hanty with both and that he only has $7,500. That is the courts, the courts read is accurate. Um, that, and you know, I have my investigators listen to his jail calls. He is calling everyone asking him for bail. You know what's not showing up? Bail money. Either his theory uh, by a man of lack of credibility or accurately, people understand that he's, he put himself there. Mr. Hanty put himself there and the court's own or anyone's own sort of subjective uh, feeling bad for him is, again, cold comfort against the law. The law is process. The law is analysis. Um, it's not pretty please. It's not, nothing's really changed, but rehashing of old arguments. I mean, that, that he blames the media, lack, complete lack of self-reflection. I mean, part of why he is, the bail is where it is and everything is where it is because of his own, act, his own actions. Now the court is kind in person to every uh, litigant and every witness and every defendant before it, but uh, that ought not to be 
confused with any sort of sincerity from Mr. Hanty's part based on evidence. You know, I, I, in a broad picture, evidence was brought forth in uh, hearings and today conjecture. Evidence wins every time. In the law, evidence wins every time. Now, my investigators also, you know, in those jail calls, what are we hearing? No change in Mr. Hanty's position. No, you know, it's all conspiracy. It's all anger. It's all uh, Hanty never being wrong. It's, it's this sort of false supplication now before the court that he's lived here for a long time. That's one bail factor, but the bail factor, and I will quote it for the court so that uh, should Mr. Uh, Hanty wish to appeal this, the court can make findings. Um, number six, 178-4853 sub six, the identity of responsible members of the community who would vouch for the rel reliability of the person. Nothing, right? Crickets. Now, uh, it is often, as it is argued here, well, I think now Mr. Hanty understands I want to see that in evidence. I want to cross-examine that because an attorney has an obligation to put the best forth forward for his client as Mr. Pitaro has a well and great reputation for doing as he's doing in this case. But uh, as a matter of evidence, whether Mr. Hanty has a newfound respect for this court, I think is dubious. And if it is, we, uh, it has not been shown. Um, the question uh, I had pointed out in my argu arguments, if we're rehashing arguments, that a person in custody gets a worse sentence. I think that is uh, statistically dubious. Uh, I would have to be happy to engage in a debate on that subject uh, because uh, the social scientists who engage in that have not uh, been able to devise a system uh, that is fair enough that would have control groups that would get no bail. The reality is more likely this, that across time and across our criminal justice system, judges who are wise and who understand how criminal cases work and criminals work and other people before the court work are detaining the right people. Now that is as a first, all this Valdez Jimenez, that's about your first bail determination. Mr. Hanty, let's not forget, when he was first arrested in this case, had an OR, first determination, bench warrant, had another uh, hearing, let's call that another first determination. No, no one's going to say that he should, by his own actions, both uh, risk the public safety, including the participants, uh, both witnesses and litigators in this case, and flight, have, any, have, have held on to that presumption that Valdez Jimenez gives. Mr. Hanty's actions are all um, his own, his, his station, current station in life, as to the bill is his own doing. Pretty please does not get you there, it ought not to get you there because, I mean, I mean, a lot of work has gone into this, a lot of work, a lot of time, and just that, well, you, you should feel bad for him uh, does not cut mustard. Uh, Mr. Pitaro argued that you have his attention now. I, I disagree. I don't think that um, is true. And even if it were true, it does not, it does nothing in the face of his risk or his uh, flight um, history. In bail, we believe the past is prologue. Um, uh, Mr. Pitaro touched on the initial issue with the firearms. That is related to the folks at the Brady background check uh, believe that given Hanty's current charges at the time, he ought not to own a firearm or possess a firearm. And they denied the transaction. Whether they're right or wrong, they're probably wrong. The issue is Mr. Hanty's reaction to it, right? His reaction is to, he blows up at them so much that, I mean, it grabs their attention that they end up reporting out to law enforcement. Similarly, you know, his, he believes he has been wronged. I don't know what the trial will bear out, but I think I pointed out before, his actions since have made the case more provable. He uh, has uh, given to the state evidence um, against him. 
again with my motion in district court. His reaction to a lawful order of this court as, a, as someone who has multiple times taken an oath to defend the constitution of this state is the, is the opposite. How can we have any, any hope that this time it will be different? And that's, we can do that in our own human interactions, but in the law, we believe in the statute and our laws. So the idea that he will now be different is of, I think, no consequence and of no value. And I'll go back to cold comfort. That he, uh, again, says he has family, has not identified someone, but I think it's of slight value that he would have a place to go live, a place to go live given its history, I don't think matters. I think it's of slight value. And about two years ago, there was a statewide commission set up to amend the statewide district court rules. One of those is rule eight sub seven, which says a party can seek reconsideration by ruling upon a showing of changed circumstances, no change. No change. It's a pretty please move, Judge. I ask you in this case for all the reasons said, but just as, as a matter of you know, sort of the perception and the rule which says, I mean, you shouldn't be back just because if you really, really want it. It's an evidentiary hearing was had. Uh, the court made a well-reasoned um, determination out of that. I, I know the gag order issue was also touched upon, but I want to remind the court as well as I did earlier that Mr. Hanty on these jail calls is actively encouraging the flight of Mr. Hillegas. I mean, that's that's not a person who says, I get it now, judge. This is a person who, who believes this system, despite his uh, claims that he uh, was a long time and honorable law enforcement officer. Mr. Hanty does not believe in this system. And that is a risk uh, to everyone and a risk in this case that ought not to cause a pretty please, a Hail Mary, if you will. Um, and the reason for bail is because we have, Mr. Hanty needs to have skin in the game. He had none to begin with. He promptly got conditions added. He continued to engage in that and you know, at every instance, he is doing the opposite of what is expected. And so um, as strongly as I can, Your Honor, I encourage you to deny the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Pitaro, before I hear from you in response, do you want uh, 10 minutes to confer with your client on the phone again off the record? You want to do that, uh, Stu? Uh, yes, he does. Okay. We're going to go off the record for 10 minutes. Mr. Pitaro, as before, make sure you mute yourself. You can turn off your video as well if you want. Come on back when you're ready. I'll just be here working on something. Thank you very much. Courts in recess. Judge, we're ready to go back on the record when you are. Thank you. All right, let's go back on the record, please. Mr. Bataro, um, you may argue uh, in response to the state. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, during the uh, uh, intervention, if you will, Your Honor, um, I was given the uh, telephone number of uh, Jonas Sandros who has informed me uh, that uh, Stuart Hanty can stay with them. Uh, uh, the court would release them. And uh, uh, so we do have the address. Mr. Hanty can provide that to pretrial people for them to make uh, you know, their review or evaluation how, how they do it uh, prior to release. But I specifically asked him and he specifically said, absolutely. So, uh, I don't, uh, Ms. Handy could give you the address. Uh, I don't have it, uh, but he give it also to pretrial uh, relief. So that portion of it, uh, I was lucky enough to uh, solve uh, during the intermission. Uh, let me just go back to the, uh, just one of the things that uh, we're, we're talking about. Bail is, um, bail is not a privilege. Bail is a right. Uh, in Nevada, bail is it is a right so uh, we don't treat it as a privilege but we do treat it as a the issuance of bail or conditions of bail as restrictions to make uh, the court comfortable um, I, I think that is in fact the 
uh, the, the way to look at it. Our state system, of course, is different than the federal system where bail is not a matter of right under the federal uh, Eighth Amendment. Uh, but we have proof of this evident presumption rates language that dates back quite truthfully to the uh, 1640s in Massachusetts as well as to the original Pennsylvania Constitution that's known as the Pennsylvania Rule now uh, on that, where almost all states have that, um, uh, in addition to the Eighth Amendment. We have Article 1, Section 6, and 7 um, on that. But in Nevada, we have a right. And, and so what I, when I say that is we look at it as the release is the preferable option. That is the, the option in Nevada that is going to be there. And so what we have to do is convince the court, if we will, if you will, that the president will make the court appearances uh, and is not a danger. Uh, uh, there is no doubt that Mr. Hanty has a big mouth. He doesn't like me saying it, but I told him this privately. I'll say it probably it's a big mouth, but that doesn't make him a danger to the community. Uh, his, the idea of fleeing no, he, Your Honor, he wasn't fleeing. He's roaming around there. He's, he, 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 he's, it's, as he said, looking into his, uh, the issue of these, uh, these monitors of what it is and what happened, happened, and, and, and there we are. The idea of the money, though, that, that is the thing that, 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 that does concern me. I, I, think, I think the court... Uh, as Mr. Stegi says, the court is wise. Well, courts try to be wise. I understand that. But what, what I'm pointing out is that the court was not aware of his inability to put the collateral up when it made its, made its ruling. And, and, and the concept of, of, of income is the, is the one clear thing that we've attempted to get around now to, to eliminate the idea that if you have the money, you're out. If you don't have the money, you're in. Now that that has been the debate that is going on in this country uh, for the last decade, if you will, on the issues of the using of of financial uh, aspects of it. The the fact of the matter is, Stuart Hanty can't come up with the collateral. Well, let me stop you. Let me stop you there, Mr. Batard, because if I don't blurt this out now, uh, it might escape me. Um, but what about the fact that your client is in his mid fifties? And he has relationships here for more than 30 years. What about the people that he knows? What about one of them posting collateral on his behalf? Uh, doesn't that go to the character of the accused factor? I mean, I, I mentioned this in my opening remarks, but oh, okay. what about the people that know him? And if they think he's a reliable risk that he's going to show up for court, they'll get their bail money back. And, you know, the, the concern that they would be painted with a brush that they associate with somebody accused of crimes like this, uh, you know, well, it's not, that, that doesn't resonate. I, 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 I you, you, you don't know, but I think you can think I'm a pretty reputable person from what you've gathered. At least Mr. Stegge keeps telling you what a nice guy I am. And I appreciate Mr. Stegge and I uh, have, have had a relationship uh, for years, uh, both in, uh, Washington and in Clark, but I don't think you're about willing to sign as collateral for a loan for me. I don't think you go out and just because your neighbors you think are nice people that you're going to you're going to sign a fifty thousand dollar collateral on a on, on a loan they they take out. Uh, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait. All he has to do for them to get their collateral back, um, you know, is is show up for court. Well, all you have to do to get your money back for your neighbor is for them to pay the, the debt. What I do have, what I did give the court is something better. All right. What you have is something better. You have a man who said, I won't let you come into my house because I trust you. Okay. I mean, I think that that is significantly stronger uh, uh, than, than, than that. The fact that, that, that a, a friend doesn't have uh, the ability or the wherewithal to put up fifty thousand dollar collateral uh, uh, for someone, I I I don't think that's a quite. I don't think that's a, a a fair argument that that if you have people who put collateral up for you, that somehow you're okay. If you don't, that somehow you're not. Well, hold on. You can't have it both. You can't have it both ways, though, Miss Patara, because on the one hand, on the one hand, my your client is 
I've been here 40 plus years, 30 years uh, law enforcement, distinguished career. If you want the court to weigh that as a factor, as I have, in favor of a lower uh, collateral, then the, the, by the same token, what kind of life has he lived? Does he have people that are willing to vouch for him and put, put their money up on his behalf that he will show up for court? Not pay back a loan, not make monthly. I mean, the risk for them would be if he didn't show up. Right. Your Honor, I, I, I don't I, I, I don't think that that the court, quite truthfully, I don't think the court could consider that as a condition of, of bail that you would have to have a third party come in and post uh, a collateral for you. The, the issue of what Mr. Hagee, that section is, is people who can win from the community and say they believe you're a reputable person. I can bring those people in if the court wants. That's entirely different than saying I'm going to put up uh, a $50,000, uh, uh, my house, my equity in my house, or, or whatever it is I have uh, under, well, whenever this case is over, whether it's over this week, next month, next year, whenever the thing is over, geez, I'll get my money back, no harm, no foul. Uh, uh, Mr. Soder uh, has offered his home. He's offered to let him in his home. And I, I can think of nothing, nothing, uh, uh, more uh, significant of a person uh, having trust than to let a person uh, into your home. And so that, I mean, that's the only, that's the only answer I suppose I can give you. I, I can't argue against, uh, should you have someone out there that puts money up or not put money up? All I can tell you is that Mr. Hanty doesn't have the collateral. He doesn't have the means to put up the collateral. He is putting up the money that he can save and, and out of his pension, uh, he has that there. He, 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 if, he, if he doesn't show up, he loses the only the last thing he has, which is his, the $7,500 up there, some of which he has, in fact, uh, I believe, borrowed from, from people who have, who have done that. So I'm not, I, I don't think I am asking that great of a movement uh, on that, Your Honor. And that is from the collateral uh, down to the, the to the to the cash that the court get the cash, not the bondsman. All right, that the court holds the cash, not the bondsman. That if okay. they, that, that that's my point, and and I, I don't know if I can make it any uh, uh, a more profound or simpler uh, than that. Seventy five hundred dollars is a lot of money. It's a lot of money to steward. It, it's a uh, Three and a half months of his of his income. That, that's that's a significant amount of money for a person uh, uh, to put up. Uh, all the other conditions that the court put on there, uh, those those in fact uh, 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 are there also, Judge. And I think it gives the court at least the, the assurance that he will in fact show up. Um, okay. All right. I uh, that's all I can do, Judge. I, I've done my. I've, I've, I've done I've done my best, and I I, I think the court has the uh, I, I think the court understands exactly what what my position is on it, and why I think that uh, uh, this change uh, is is warranted under these circumstances. All right, thank you. The matter submitted. I'll have a written decision out by Thursday, at this time, two days. Okay. I'll go back and take another look at this. I mean, Mr. Bertaro, you're a very fine attorney if you're able to get this motion on, get it heard and it is in, in the course of a week, right? I mean, uh, Mr. and Mr. Stege, uh, to his credit, he didn't say, judge, I want you know 10 plus three plus seven days to respond in writing. And then, and then I set a hearing in two months. You, you wanna know, you wanna know. I'll take another look at this, see if I overlooked it, see if the fact that uh, somebody apparently is willing to let Mr. Um, and he live there. Uh, if he bails out, um, I'll take another look at this. Um, if, uh, if it goes your way, uh, it's with a reminder that he gets the uh, GPS tracking before he leaves the jail, that he stays in Washoe County, uh, that he does not associate with Mr. Hilligus while Mr. Hilligus is on pending warrant status. He continues to abide by the prior orders of the court and that he stays on uh, pre-trial service supervision, including them knowing where he lives. On the other hand, if the court declines uh, to uh, revisit its order, it's not because I haven't heard you, it's because 
The court believes its reasoning was sound and does not find a reason to change it. That doesn't mean uh, I'm not sympathetic to Mr. Hanty or that he's not uh, experiencing uh, pain and discomfort in his back um, and other things going on in his life. It just means under the circumstances, taking into account everything that's transpired, um, the court would feel that its priority was fair and reasonable, is not inclined to change it. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Mr. Hanty, thank you for your courtesy, um, being respectful of the court during this hearing. Um, with that, um, Mr. Stegey, Mr. Batar, Mr. Hanty, the court will be in recess. Yeah, right? Do we have a new court date? Is we know you're going to you're, you're, you're going to jointly contact the uh, um, okay. jury commissioner and pick a new date that works with all involved. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Bye okay. for now.